morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Salle Camille Blanc. This is the third morning of Distri. Uh, we know it's a very busy program. We know it's an ambitious schedule. Uh, so thank you for turning up here bright and early. Uh, we expect uh, many more to come in the room over the next uh, five, 10 minutes. So they've given me the introduction this morning. They've asked me to do a slow start. They said, uh, nothing too serious. Do it uh, in a more narrative form. Uh, you've seen a lot of uh, strategy documents. You've seen a lot of uh, data heavy and content heavy presentations. So I'm just going to simply show you a few pictures and talk about what I think is happening in the world of retail. These are questions. These are trends. These are activities uh, that I think uh, raise some, some important issues and we should be mindful of moving forward. And I think it might show us the way in the months and, and years to come in retail. So the title of the speech they gave me was Around the World in 80 Retailers. I have 10 or 15 minutes, so I should get started. I don't have 80 examples. I have just a handful. But one, around the world, I want to come very close to our market here in Monaco, Lick. Uh, you saw Stefan Bagbo on stage last night. He was given a fresh award for his innovative retail concept around Internet of Things, connected devices, wearable devices. I think it's particularly interesting for a few reasons. Uh, he didn't mention the origin of the name. Uh, Lick, why call a retail operation? Why name your website Lick? Well, it's a play on this old Steve Jobs quote. We make our devices so beautiful, you'll want to lick the keys. Uh, and I think that's the target. That's the point we're trying to hit with Internet of Things and wearable devices to make something beautiful, to make it a fashion accessory. But this is a, a very fast moving space. Uh, this is big hype, big hope. We don't quite know. We're only maybe one, two years into the trend. And he's leading the charge to present in a new way. This is the Lick retail store in La Défense. And I think it's quite interesting how they select their products. They encourage the audience, they encourage their customers to vote on their website, Lick the Life. They list uh, many different products from many different brands and manufacturers, and they encourage all visitors to vote on which ones they find most compelling and most interesting. And that's often the basis of the selection of the products in the store. So it's a new way to engage your customers, and it's a new way to understand you know, what do they want to see, uh, particularly if you're on the front lines of connected devices, where there are so many new things coming. You know, what do our customers really want to see and experience firsthand in our stores? So I think Lick raises a very important question, and moving forward, we'll see how this plays out for our business. But can we crowdsource our product assortment? Can we put it online? Can we encourage interaction? Can we encourage feedback? But I think uh, Lick is a great example, and we should take a closer look. Another example is Smartone. Uh, this is my home market in Hong Kong. Uh, Smartone is a mobile operator, retail outlets throughout the city. I think Smartone is quite interesting because they recognized, not just in technology, but worldwide, there is a trend on health. Uh, the first retailers to tap it, of course, were the grocery stores, understanding organic products, bio, uh, understanding that people wanted fresh and were willing to pay a premium for it because they felt it was better, more nutritious for their family. Um, this is a global trend that has now gone mainstream. It is health, it is fitness, it is well-being. And there's no mistake that the first breakout star in the wearables tech category was exactly in the fitness space. I mean, this is... Fitbit, Jawbone Up, Nike Fuel, and others, uh, this sort of planted the flag for wearables to say that people do indeed want some sort of understanding, some device attached to the body to give them better insight, a, a new way to, to, to read their habits. So I think Smartone is quite innovative in terms of taking it to the next step. Uh, in my neighborhood, the shop was recently uh, refurbished. And when they opened, I, I walk in the back, and they have a section a wall and a mobile operator completely dedicated to e-health. And this is just one of the products that they're showcasing there. Uh, it's around fitness, health, well-being, and now even safety and security uh, for children, for the elderly, using our devices, using smartphones, using applications, offering a new way to understand, is our child sleeping well? What is the temperature like? Are the breathing patterns normal? And then on the other side, you have elderly who want to live independent lives. Uh, but you need to have a way to stay in contact with them. You need to have a way to understand if they're moving around freely, if they have an accident, if they have a problem. And I think mobile operators and I think we as ICT retailers can
can play a key role in enabling that solution moving forward. So I think another one we want to take a close look at is e-health. Can we capitalize on this health trend as an industry? We've already seen the success of the fitness bands, but there are many more application areas for fitness, health, and well-being. I come to often the benchmark in ICT retail, a company that we all take a very close look at and have been tracking for the last 10 years or more, the Apple retail outlets. I talked about this a little bit in my workshop two days ago. But quite frankly, we haven't seen any leap forward. We haven't seen huge innovation from Apple retail in the last two or three years. But I think we're potentially at a tipping point now, and I think we should be taking a much closer look. And again, it goes back to the wearables trend. Uh, this is one of the pictures that come from Google Glass marketing operation. It is a beautiful, it is a seamless, it is an incredible experience. This is the promise of wearable technology. Well, the promise also failed for many of us to live up to the reality. This was what they wanted, but this is what many of us thought <laughs> it in fact was. Uh, it's a bit clumsy, battery power was limited. Uh, it wasn't the experience that lived up to that initial promise. But now with the second and third generation of wearable technology, we're finally looking at the offer in a different way. We're finally making things that are true fashion accessories. And I think Apple Watch is something we'll all be watching very closely. This is Apple's most personal product ever, physically attached to the body, against your skin. You know, can measure your heart rate, very personal. It's also Apple's most personalizable product ever. So it's not standard form factor with the choice in four colors. It is a choice in color. We have two sizes, you have premium materials, you have different textures, and you have all sorts of options for the display. You can do the classic analog movement, you can do full digital, you can do pictures, you can do many things. So this is squarely in the space of not a conventional electronics product, but more belonging in a watch boutique. So how are they going to change the retail experience in the Apple stores? Um, there are all sorts of rumors that, yes, they've done a, a big order for carpeting. <laughs> it's not just uh, changing the look and the layout of the stores, but it's really about that customer experience they're going to be offering around the new wearables opportunity. Take a very close look in the coming weeks. What is Apple Retail going to do around the Apple Watch presentation? Moving to Australia, down under. Uh, some of you might know Optus, another mobile operator. I think it's a great example and it carries on what we saw last night as part of the Fresh presentation. You remember the Listen headphones. Many of you know uh, Tom's Shoes, this idea that you buy a quality product, but at the same time, you're doing something good for others. So the Listen headphones, you buy a set for yourself, and they also commit to providing a hearing device for hearing impaired people uh, in lesser developed countries. So it's this idea of corporate social responsibility putting the product, putting the service, putting the store at the center of the solution. And I think one of the compelling ideas comes from Optus. This is what the retail store looks like. We all know Australia. These are people who love to go to the beach. Sydney, Melbourne on weekends is very busy and beautiful weather. But they have a problem. You hear, you hear every year in the news uh, there are shark attacks, shark sightings. It incites panic on the beach. Optus believes they can provide part of the solution. So they created something called the Clever Buoy that is placed strategically outside of some of the busiest uh, bathing areas, some of the busiest surfing areas. And on the strength of the Optus network, they're able to determine when a shark is in the area, beam a signal to the satellite, and then immediately down to the lifeguards and anyone else on the beach who might have that application. It's a great example. It's uh, an example that is unique to the Australian experience. But I think it highlights that example of you know, putting the store, putting the service, putting the brand at the center of the solution. So take a closer look at Optus and others. Will CSR become an integral part of our branding? Another example, again, moving closer to home, would be Darty. Uh, Darty is a, a leader in the French market, a leader in Benelux as well, uh, doing a lot of innovative things around the experience, a lot of innovative things around the service opportunity. But rather than hear directly from me, uh, we're honored to be uh, uh, joined uh, at the event by the CEO of Darty. So I'd ask him to step forward to give a little bit of a clear picture on what they're doing and the opportunity we have around the future of service retail, using Darty as the example. So join me in welcoming to the stage CEO of Darty, Regis Schultz. Regis? Thank you. Welcome. 